I'm back for another video guys, so let's get right into it. So another Nintendo Switch kiosk. Uh, kind of heads up, I found this guy in Georgia selling it. Um, funny story was that I had a friend who does shipping, so I called the guy up. I was like, hey, can you think you can bring this kiosk over to me? And uh, he's like, yeah, I'll do it. So he shows up to pick up the kiosk and the wife is sitting outside with the trans light, just this piece here, it can come off, uh, outside it with a trans light in one hand and a shotgun in the other out there in Georgia. I don't know if it was Atlanta where. And then I guess apparently they had one of the guy's relatives or friends had done a dealing with Craigslist or something and it had gone south. And so I guess they were pretty tense about that situation. So they were a little bit worried that, hey, there's this random guy trying to buy a Nintendo Switch kiosk and he's sending some deliverer that's going to give you the money and pick it up. But, <laughs> you know, my friend, he deals with just shipping uh, gaming memorabilia around the country. That's all he does, like shipping uh, cabinets, kiosks, signage, whatever you want. He does that. So he shows up, you know, he has his big truck and a huge trailer, opens up the trailer and the wife's like, honey, 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 come, come here, come here. They're legit, they're legit, <laughs> you know? So that, I thought that was a funny story about that. You know, they put away the guns and they're like, oh, okay, cool, this is this is a legit person. And they had a really awesome conversation about games and stuff. But whatever the case is, I got this kiosk ship. It took about a month to get to me because he's been all over the country. He goes from east to west coast, north and south. So he's moving everywhere. So I thought that was a cool story to talk about <laughs> this kiosk. Um, it didn't come with, it came with all the, all the brackets minus this cover here and minus the cover here, unfortunately, but, um, you know, I'm probably gonna get a cover made for this and I've already made, uh, gotten a uh, pie for this. So this pie is good to go. It's, it's set up and it works. Um, you can see there. So that's good. Um, it did come with the speaker that goes in here. So this speaker powers the, um, this speaker is for audio for the Pi if it's not going to be running uh, this version of it. But if it runs, uh, I believe, um, Labo, and there's another variant where it just talks about system and, and system stuff, then it will use this. It was, you know, when once this went interactive, uh, they took the Pi's ability to really play video on the TV because they didn't want it to interrupt the console. So they had to remove, unplug the HDMI and then it made it its own little video player down here in the bottom instead of playing up there. So if you go to any store now, it just plays Labo. Or if it's connected to the uh, Nintendo servers via online, then it'll go into out of service because Nintendo doesn't want people touching these. You know, COVID has really caused people to, uh, really, really caused Nintendo not to want people to touch these just because, you know, spreading of germs. Uh, but regardless, uh, just to kind of go over this one that I got here, I put the TV on. Uh, I made my own brackets <laughs> for it. Um, you can kind of see a little bit there in the back. There's some, there's some brackets there. You can move the TV a little bit, but it's not going anywhere. It's bolted in. I can just push it back in and it's not going to go anywhere. I just wanted it to sit flush with the kiosk because the one, if it has the original brackets, it sits flush with the kiosk here and it looks like it's a part of the, of the kiosk. If I were to put another bracket on there, it would have been at a weird angle and didn't, it, would, it would have a gap in the bottom and I didn't want that gap. Uh, but I was able to put it on. I removed the top cover. The top cover just has two screws here and it comes out and you can open it and see in the inside and you can mess with that. Um, what else did I do? That's pretty much it. Didn't need much. Other than me getting this and trying to see if I can find a cover for it, it's pretty much as complete as I'll probably get it. And then... I found this huge sign down here in the bottom. This thing is like six feet. Uh, just found it yesterday, honestly. It is a GameStop sign. Uh, apparently, the guy got it from a GameStop that closed. I don't know how long ago, but there it is. You can see it's a big boy next to that kiosk. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with it that one just yet. It's so big. It's made out of uh, cloth material. And then the back of it has some uh, just uh, paper, you know, some white cardboard here to kind of make sure that it doesn't uh, fold in on itself and it stays kind of flat on the outside there on that curve. Uh, I have the hardware for it. Those are there. It used to go into slat wall, so those are the two hardwares. 
there's two bolts here and then they would fall in um the guy also had an xbox one sitting there but he says he's gonna keep the xbox he's more of an xbox guy so i was like yeah lucky me yeah, i'm a big nintendo guy he had a 3ds sign like this but he said he threw it out because he thought people wouldn't be interested in it and i was like oh what have you done i'm a big handheld guy but oh well at least i got this one uh, i'm gonna go on over into the actual game room here so let's go to the game room so walk right in and i've hung up the 360 sign that i showed in a previous video and i found a playstation 2 sign neon sign and then i have my ds sign still there um big neon collect I, i'm big on neons originally i wasn't gonna get rid of the i was gonna get rid of the 360 sign but once i found the playstation 2 sign i was like you know what? i'm keeping them and i'm gonna hang them up on the wall i don't care if they're not nintendo but you know they're part of gaming history and they just they look awesome i love the neon signs they just really pop you know it's broad daylight right now but you can see they look so cool so i decided to just you know what i want to keep them um what i'm going to cover next though are going to be the controllers that came with these kiosks i know last time i kind of just showed them off that were there but i've right now i have everything dismantled so i figured i'd cover them now now would be a good opportunity right now with everything being disconnected um so the Joy-Cons are just standard Joy-Cons that you can buy in the store. The grip is just a standard charging grip you can buy in the store. The only difference is going to be the actual cable. This USB cable is something that Nintendo will not sell and they just use on these kiosks. Now, if you see here, I did, I, I, I'm just showing you how to remove it. Um, if you ever want to change this out, you want to replace something that's broken on these. And if you have the USB cable... There's these little screw holes right here where you can do that. I've removed one there so you can see that's no screw hole there. It's a little small like Allen type wrench thing. You unscrew it and it unlocks it and it lets you pull this out. And then you can replace whatever you got to replace and then put it back together. And then here is where it locks in. It has these special tri -wing, uh, triangle screws that screw in on the metal bracket that goes there on the, on the kiosk. And then the rest goes inside, and it goes to the actual console. So that's that. And then there's the individual Joy-Cons with their uh, with their uh, rails here on the side. And they each have a, a, a USB. Now these, if you want to service these, you're like, I don't see any screws. Where do I go to remove these to replace a Joy-Con that's broken? Or, or you just want to change the color, whatever the case may be. If you want to remove these, you see there, you see there's nothing there. It's actually just a, a, a cover. You can put a screw in there, uh, remove the cover, and there's going to be like a tri-wing under it. And then you can unscrew that, and then it will let you unlock this to get this out. It's a very long cable. Let me see if I can show you here. You see how long that cable is? But... That's how you can service these if you ever get your hands on these and you want to replace whatever you need to. That's where the screw is. So that is that. Um, I kind of took the pie apart just to kind of show you. So this is the bracket that the pie sits in. It's just four screws that grab it on. You can see the four screws there. And then there's these two screws on each side that make sure the pie doesn't pop out. Um, so if I loosen these two screws here the pie comes right out and you can see there they put these little rubber stoppers there to make sure it doesn't crack the case and there's a little RPI quest and that's pretty much it I mean it's just a pie with I guess some special Nintendo stuff in it, and there's a HDMI, the audio, and then the USB charging port. That's all it really is, and this is the touchscreen. So it's pretty simple, but I like how Nintendo did this. And then I'm uh, here's the uh, magnetic uh, overlay that they put over it. They only came out with Labo. There's nothing else that you can put on these. So either. So either it's like black or you have the overlay that goes over it and that's it. 
Uh, the next thing I'm going to cover are the trans lights. So, GameStop, Toys R Us have this size trans light. Walmart has the smallest. There's a middle one, which I don't have, but it's the best buy variant. And that's the coolest thing I think about these kiosks. You can switch out the artwork for whatever game you like in the console's history. Or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, is just the cool feature about these kiosks that none of these have. Um, I'm going to go over to my Nintendo 64 kiosk. I had to make my own artwork that goes around. Which I think is pretty cool. You know, it has Mario Party, Smash Bros. and 64. Uh, 64, Super Mario 64, Pokemon Stadium, Paper Mario. And has a little Mario there. And then a little uh, fox on the side. I made that myself. It was a pain in the butt to do it. But it came out decent. I might change the coloring here and there. Instead of just being on a white backboard. Back, background, I mean. Uh, but, you see, there's no, there's no signage for these. And if there is... The official signage for the Nintendo 64 sign uh, kiosk is just this little piece here that went under here in the bottom, which a lot of times would be covered by the ports for the uh, for the uh, controllers. Right now I have them removed just so you can see the artwork better, but once I connect them, you're not going to see that it says Paper Mario there. Um, so I just thought, you know what, let me make my own. You know, I have the file if anybody wants it, and I can give it to you so you can have this and print this out. And then you figure out how to do the overlay because I don't. I had to kind of do a trace on my on my own to, to get the cutting perfect for it. But it's cool that I made it. Um, I always like doing stuff like that. If you go to the Wii U, they did have signage that they would replace every now and then. I know I have my boxes there right now. Um, but a lot of that signage was lost, unfortunately. It's it's glued on, and there's no lights kind of showing it off. You know, there's no LEDs behind it to show off, hey, this is a game that's that's being showcased right now. As opposed to this one, there's LEDs and it's bright and it kind of catches your attention. So that's super cool that they did this with this kiosk. I hope the future kiosks, they do that. Another kiosk they did that with is with the 3DS kiosk. They made these huge trans lights for them, which I think are really awesome. I have several of them. I'll probably showcase them in a different video. But for now, let me show you what I got for the Nintendo... Uh, Toys R Us slash a GameStop variant. So this is Labo, Mario Party, uh, Mario Party, Mario Maker Two, uh, Luigi's Mansion, Zelda, Wind Way, uh, Zelda: Link's Awakening, and Sword and Shield, and the My Way to Play, and of course the Odyssey. So I have five of them. There's many more, and I think Canada got even exclusives. Like they got Fire Emblem, they got Arms, uh, they got a larger of. Uh, uh, Link's Awakening. So Canada got pretty cool with the translates. They got better. One. They got a lot more selection than we did here in the States. Um, now this is the only one that I have that is of the Best Buy variant. So you see it's kind of small here. Unfortunately it is the only one that I could find. But hey. At least I have one. So if I ever find the Best Buy variant. I at least have the artwork to put in. Um, and then the, the smallest variant which is the uh, Walmart. Oh yeah, I forgot. The largest variant is also shared by Target. Target also shares the largest variant. Um, and then last but not least, like I said, I have the Find uh, My Way to Play. I have the Mario Party Smash and Pikachu and Eevee. Let's go. I wish they would have done one for just Smash, a big one, but oh well. They, that's the best they got, <laughs> fortunately. And then Luigi's Mansion, Link's Awakening, Sword and Shield, the smaller Mario Maker 2. If you're wondering why I have two, I just made a photocopy and then just stuck it in there. It's easy because these are small. You know, 8 by 8 half by 11 paper works fine for these. Awesome. For those, I don't have that kind of paper to, <laughs> to make those bigger unless I you know, stitch them back together. I have the Find My Way to Play, which I think is pretty cool. And last but not least, I have the Nintendo Labo. So I have the most, I have most of the translates for the Walmart variant. I think I'm only missing. There's a Kirby and a Mario Odyssey variant for the Walmart, which I, I haven't been able to find unfortunately. But hopefully, maybe in the future, someone has some. Maybe someone can send me a picture of them. Whatever the case would be, so maybe someone will contact me through these videos. That, hey, I have some of the stuff that you're missing, or whatever and then I wanted to cover something else that I found that's pretty cool so 
people wondering where is this Smash Bros. Ultimate sign from, this light sign? Um, it is from Best Buy. It came from a Best Buy, who knows where. It was actually new and never used. It was in its still wrap, in a shrink wrap and everything. Um, it's like this really, really thick plastic. Um, and, it, you know, it's really big. It's like far, four feet by five, something like that. Of course, it, I had to make my own uh, light box for it to, so it can light up and shine through. So I thought that was cool. But I also found another thing of the Best Buy. So if you go to a Best Buy, they have like these, this shelf on the bottom that has this little triangle. And each side of the triangle has this light display of a different game. And this, it, before they used to have 3DSs and Switches, but I think now it's exclusively Switches. Uh, but they have, it's like a Nintendo, light up Nintendo logo on the, on the bottom middle of the cabinet. And then at your, at your, uh, at your leg height right here. There's, you know, the consoles with, it's just a Nintendo Switch portable console kiosk that you can play and then put back down. Well, this is a sign for one of those, but this is for the 3DS side. So, it's still new. It still has a shrink wrap. Um, I'm going to make a light box for it, and it's really, really thick. But I just thought that was cool to kind of showcase. So, I'll make a light box, and that'll look real cool. But, I think that's it for the video today. Just wanted to cover... A little bit more about the Nintendo Switch kiosk, as well as some extra finds that I've made. You know, it's crazy. It's These finds are happening almost uh, weekly now. Sometimes I thought that would be monthly. Now I'm finding things weekly now. So, let's see what, what I find in the next video. Have a good one.